Welcome amigos to another After Effects tutorial and this one is on the new Rotor Brush 2.0, the latest update to Rotor Brush. Now it's been hyped as game changer so I had to check it out for myself. And in this tutorial, we're gonna dive deep into Rotor Brush 2.0 all the different properties and the best tips and techniques to achieve the best rotoscope for your video. Now, speaking about tips, if you wanna learn more about After Effects, not only tips, but really get a good foundation, master the foundation on the techniques, the workflow, and the tools in After Effects, definitely check out the After Effects master course that I designed. It's based on my experience. If you sign up, you can get a couple classes for free. That link is in the description. And remember that life is truly a gift. Make it count. Select your footage and drag it to the composition icon to create a comp with the same size and frame rate as your footage. Now you can see that this is a pretty long video. It's about a minute and 45. So let's fast forward to 25 seconds. What we'll do is we'll trim down this video. Hit B for Bravo to set the endpoint of the work area. Let's go to 3015. Hit N for November to set the out point and right click trim comp to work area. So we're just focusing on this section of the video. Now the specific part that I want to rotoscope, I'm gonna just isolate that section as well. So let's go to 27 seconds and make, make sure that your layer is selected, Control Shift D or Command Shift D to splice or cut your layer. Let's disable the audio and let's go forward to about 2915. And again, I wanna splice this layer, Control Shift D or Command Shift D if you're using an Apple computer. And this layer, let's call it Roto. Let's change the color to blue, perfect. We're almost ready to start rotoscoping, but before we do, there's a couple of things that you can do to help achieve the best rotoscope. And this is according to the Adobe documentation on the Rotor Brush 2.0. Number one is you see this little icon right here for fast preview, switch it to off final quality. That's the first step. They say switching it to final quality will help you achieve a better rotoscope. So make sure that you're there. Number two, Let's go to our roto layer. Let's double click to jump into the layer window. So you can see it's layer followed by the name of your layer, which is roto. And let's go to window. Make sure that you have brushes, the brushes panel open, which we do. And let's go to the roto brush. Now if we click and hold, we have two options, the roto brush and the refine edge, which is really helpful when you have hair or any fur or any type of that type of scenario. And hopefully in a future tutorial, I'll show you an example with hair and how to use the refined edge. But for this tutorial, let's stick with a rotor brush because there's a lot of different things, a lot of different properties that I want to show you to achieve the best possible rotoscope. Okay, now, when we bring this, when we select a rotor brush, we can go ahead to our brush panel, we can select the size. And for the pen pressure, I have a Wacom tablet, so I'm gonna set it to off. Now we can increase or decrease using the brush panel, but there is a better and easier way, and it's using the keyboard shortcut. And it's, if you hold on to control and click and drag, we can increase or decrease the size of our brush. Now what we want to do is pretty much just paint the selection that we're going to rotoscope. But before we do that, we need to make sure that we're starting at the best frame possible. And what I'm gonna do is, the reason why I spliced this is because I wanna start right here where I spliced it. And this is going to be my base frame. Your base frame is extremely important because After Effects AI algorithm is going to use the information from the base frame to calculate the edges in the next frames. So make sure that you select the best frame to start because that's going to be your base frame and make sure that you do the best job of painting or selecting the area that you want to cut out or rotoscope. Now, there are some people that say draw around the edges, but according to Adobe, that's not the best method. They say is to simply draw across 
the object that you want to rotoscope. So that's what we did. Now, the third thing is try to use the least amount of strokes possible. And we'll try to do that. It's not always easy. If, for example, you draw something and it doesn't look good, just control Z or command Z to undo. The other tip that they gave is, for example, for a human being, try to think of the skeleton or the bones and draw right there where the bones would be. In this case, let's make this smaller, this brush, and let's just draw a line like this. And this, let's draw right here in the middle. And let's make this smaller and let's keep adding to our selection. Okay, now let's add this. Everything else looks good. We want to remove this area. If we hold on to the Alt or Option key, if you're using an Apple, it'll turn into this red or minus, which is the background stroke. This is the green and the plus is the foreground stroke, which adds to the selection. And if you hold on to Alt or Option, this red is the background, which if we click and drag, it removes from the selection like you saw right, right there. Now we need to add this again, the hand, and let's remove this area. And let's select this part of the hat. Let's undo. Wasn't too happy. So let's go ahead and let's make this a little bit bigger. And that looks better. And you see this area? Let's remove this area right there. Let's see. Let's undo. Like I said, this is the base frame. So this is extremely important that we get it right. Let's undo. And let's draw this. OK. If we zoom out, and the way to zoom in or zoom out, you can use comma or the period to zoom out or zoom in or control plus or control minus. Before we do anything else, let's go to the rotor brush properties. Now for version, we have version 2.0, which is the latest one in 2020 as of October, 2020. If you're using, if you're opening a project with the older version of rotor brush, we can go back to the 1.0. And we go to the next one, which is quality. You have standard and best. And quality refers to how detailed the edges are. Standard is like a fast mode. And best will give you the most detailed edges possible. So you always want to go with best. If for some reason your computer is, you have an older computer and it's really lagging when you hit best, then you can try it out with standard. But for the most part, always try to go to best. Now, if you want the best of both worlds, there's a third option in hybrid mode, which Adobe says, and that is using the AI algorithm of 2.0, but with the properties of 1.0. And that is if you go down to propagation and if you enable the classic controls, what this does is it gives you the algorithm, the AI algorithm of the new Rotor Brush 2.0, but with the controls from 1.0. So that's a different, that's a third option. But for this one, let's just stick with 2.0 with best. And what I'm going to do is just zoom in here. So we can see. So what we want to do is now propagate either backwards or forwards. So you can start, you can work all the way at the end and work your way backwards. But in this case, we're just going to go forward. You can hit space bar. And this is what a lot of people do. They just hit spacebar and they let After Effects do all the work. And you can see that it's doing a really great job of finding the edges. But what I like to do is, to be honest with you, amigos, I like to go frame by frame and check every single frame. Yes, it's a little bit more work. It's a, it'll take a little bit more time, but it guarantees a better rotoscope. And there's a couple keyboard shortcuts that helps you go frame by frame. Number one is if you hit page down, you go forward one frame, hit page up, you go backwards one frame. You can also use control or command and the right arrow to go forward, control or command and the left arrow to go back. So let's do that. Let's go frame by frame. Where we need to either add or remove, we'll do that. So 
for the first couple of frames, it's doing a really great job. Pretty amazing. And by the way, if you hold on to spacebar, you get the hand tool, which is right here, the hand tool, and you can move around. And this is super helpful. I use this all the time. So let's keep, keep going frame by frame. It's doing a really great job. You can see that the wall and the hat, they're very similar pixel colors, but the algorithm is doing a great job of isolating the hat. Okay, let's see here. So let's go back. You can see this frame, we want to start removing this area. So let's hold on to all or option and let's just draw a line right there. Perfect. And perfect. The next frame is picking it up. And let's zoom out for now and let's go frame by frame. Let's move this up. Okay, and let's zoom in and we see a little bit of the sock. So let's add that. Let's see, everything else looks good. Let's keep going forward. And we might want to add, let's go back. It's kind of hard to tell where the sock really ends. Let's see, we can just use that and let's keep going. It looks pretty good. Okay. Here we want to, between his hand and his neck, let's make this smaller and let's remove this area. Perfect. And we might want to add this area here and let's remove this area. Perfect. Actually, we should have done it for the previous frames. And it's kind of hard to tell because, let's undo, it's kind of hard to tell because the colors are so similar. Even I'm having a hard time trying to pick it up. Okay, let's go forward. Perfect. Okay, this should be all good. Yeah, when I was doing this just in the lab, this is the tricky part. This part with the hat in the hand was the tricky part. And despite being kind of tricky, the the algorithm, the new Rotorbrush 2.0 did a pretty great job. You can see here, even the hat, maybe take it a little bit, remove, I don't know. Let's hit undo for now, it's fine. It's, it's really hard to tell. And this isn't, let's go back here. This isn't the best clip. This is from YouTube. And it wasn't at the best bit rate as well. And despite all that, I'm pretty impressed at the job of detecting the edges. You see right here, it's, we'll leave it like that for now. Actually here, it lost the hat. So let's go back to this frame and we can just draw that section. Let's undo and let's see if we can do it better. Okay, and there you go. That looks better in the next frame. Better, much better. Okay, so we're gonna finish right here. So what I'm gonna do is, this is the area. So all this roto is cached right now. But what we want to do is we want to lock it. So just do this so we know exactly that we don't want we don't want After Effects or the rotor brush to go beyond what we have. What we need to do is we need to lock it. We need to freeze it. So we're gonna hit this button to freeze it, and it's going to freeze all that rotoscope that we just did. And if we try to use a rotor brush after we after it's frozen, you can see that we have this line going across and 
it just means that we can't there's no, we can't do anything to it even though we draw it's not going to affect it at all because it's frozen now you can unfreeze it let's let's say for example you go back and you notice like hey maybe i want to either you can see here i don't know maybe i should have removed that section i would hit freeze to unfreeze it go back use a rotor brush and remove this area right here from the selection you see this is a little area that i forgot that i i guess i should have removed it but it's okay for now we'll leave it but you can always unfreeze, go back and use a rotor brush, add or remove to the selection, and then freeze it again. Now, let me show you these controls. Number one is you have alpha, toggle alpha, which shows you the black and white mat. The next one is toggle alpha boundary. And alpha boundary just shows you the actual roto boundary. The next one is alpha overlay, which shows you your rotoscope against a solid color. And we can change the color by clicking on the color. For example, we can make it this blue. We can change the opacity of that color. We can make it all the way 100 or somewhere in between. Now let's go to the roto brush properties. We have feather, contrast, shift edge, and reduce chatter. Now for this, what I like to do is go to the alpha so we can see the black and white mat and use these properties when we see the black and white mat. Number one is feather. And let me show you when we bring the feather all the way to zero, very jagged, and we bring it all the way to 10. What it does is it seems like it feathers it, but it really just rounds, smooths, smooths out the edges. So what I like to do is keep the feather around somewhere in the middle between four, five, and six. We go up to six, but really just keep it around five. Now the contrast, we bring it all the way, get very jagged. We go all the way down to 20, for example, 20%. Now this is the feather that we're looking for. For this one, let's keep it around 50%. And we can shift the edge of the mat. We can decrease or we can increase the mat. So let's say minus... I usually put it anywhere from like minus 20 to minus 30, minus 35. Really don't go over minus 50, but minus 20, 25 is, is a good number that I usually, usually select. And the last one is reduce chatter. If you have any noise crawl along the edges, this just kind of helps you smooth out that noise crawl. If you go too high, you can see that we're getting some, some, some stuff going on in here. If you go too high, but you can see that it just kind of helps reduce any noise crawl or noise noise along the edges of your mat. So we'll leave it at 25. If your footage has motion blur, you can select motion blur, which will detect that motion blur. And the last one we have, let's go back to, let's go back to this example right here. Let me see if I can find a good frame to illustrate this. The last option is decontaminate edge colors. And what that will do is if your rotoscope still contains pixel colors from the background, it'll do its best job to remove it and just kind of blend it in. And let's, you can see right here, you can see some of the fence color just kind of spills over onto our roto. And if we click on it, you can see that it tried to do its best job to just remove that. Now, sometimes when you use this option, it'll introduce artifacts. So when that happens, I just drill down and for the amount, I just switch it to 50%, which is a good balance between. So you have a little bit of that, but not too much where it'll introduce some artifacts. So I've had that issue before. It, if you make it 100%, it'll add too much artifacts. And not all the cases will need this. So if you just want to put some text behind it, you definitely don't need this. If you want to isolate with maybe a solid color, maybe you might want to go ahead and check this option. Okay, once we're done, so these are pretty much the options for the rotor brush. Once we're done, let's go back to the composition. And if we toggle the transparency grid, you can see that our roto layer is completely rotoscoped, it's completely cut out. 
And I'm telling you, if I did this with any other tools, this would take me, man, it would take me at least a good three, four, five hours just to do maybe even more. Now, what I'm going to do is this bottom layer, this is our BG or background layer. Let me just extend this. And right here at 27, Control Shift D, what I'm going to do is just to show you, let's add a black and white. And now we have our subject in color, but our background in black and white. We can add any layer in between our foreground, our roto, and our background layer. For example, we go to the text tool, Mookie. We put Mookie. And just make sure that this is not on top of our roto layer, but underneath. You can trim this. And there you go. I was impressed because it's not the best quality video but it did a good job. And that is it, amigos. Hopefully you learn good techniques to give you the best rotoscope for your projects. If you want to go into the Adobe documentation and read more about it, I wanna post a link and it gives you a breakdown and pretty much that breakdown, I try to put as much as I could into this video tutorial. And remember that life is truly a gift, make it count.